Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we introduce and familiarize ourselves with G-O-R-O-M and O-R-O-M beats for Go. Sometimes I call it Go-R-O-M, but I just want you to know that anytime I use that word Go-R-O-M, I'm talking about G-O-R-O-M, okay? Some people also call it Gum. Whatever you want to call it, as far as you understand what I'm talking about, it's fine, okay? So this is a follow-up on our last video where I showed you how to create simple REST APIs with Go. However, our API was a bit too simple to handle post requests because we lacked a database for data persistence. In today's video, we will get started using Go, okay, for interacting with our MySQL database. And we are going to do so under the following talking points. We are going to look at the project setup. We are going to install and set up Go RM. Then we are going to see how we can create a record. We are going to see how we can fetch multiple records. We are also going to see how we can fetch single records. And last but not least, we are also going to see how we can update a record. So absolutely smash that like button. Ensure you subscribe to the channel so you can get access to all of our videos in the future as they drop. So let's dive in with the project setup. The first thing we'll do is to open up a terminal and navigate to the projects forward slash go folder. Then we'll create a new directory, go underscore db, and navigate into this folder. Then we are going to run go mod init go underscore hyphen db. This creates a go package for us. Then we are going to run go get hyphen u gom dot io forward slash gom. After that package is done installing, we are going to install a compatible MySQL driver by running go get hyphen u gom.ru forward slash driver forward slash mysql next i'll open up the project inside of vs code where i'll create an index.go file and inside of this file i'll declare a package main then i'll import gom.ru forward slash driver forward slash mysql and gom.ru forward slash gom then i'll create a main function and inside it will attempt to connect to the mysql database the snippet pasted in here uses gom to open a new database connection if there are any errors while trying to connect to the database then we'll call the built-in panic function next we'll create a struct which is a gom.mod there this syntax allows a structure to be treated like a gom data object and as such it will have some extra properties added onto it they will add a name property on the struct which is a string and email property which is also a string then I'll create a new file helper for slash main.go and inside of this file, we'll create a package helper. We'll copy the user structs from the index.go file and paste it into the helper for slash main.go. We'll define and export a function create user from this file. This function accepts a pointer to a database connection and email. It returns a user object or an error object. Inside the function, we'll create a new user object. Then we'll create a variable result which is equal to call in db.create and pass in the user filter we just created. If the result the error is not new, they will want to return an empty object and a string that reads error creating user. Otherwise, we will return the newly created user and an empty string. Let's head back to the index.go file where we will attempt to create a new user by importing and calling helper.create user with the db as the first argument and an email sam at gmail.com and the name sometime. If there are any errors returned from the function, we'll call the panic function with this error. Otherwise, we want to print a message that reads accounts created successfully with the user ID. We'll start up our local MySQL server with XAMPP. Then I'm going to run go run index.go from the terminal. I can see that we get a message accounts created successfully. Now let's try to fetch all the users in database by creating a function get users, which accepts a DB argument, which is a pointer to gom.db. And this function is going to return a user array. So inside of this function, we'll create the variable users, which is of use type user array. Then we'll create a variable result, which is equal to the result of db.find and pass in that users to it. If the result is not new, they want to return an empty array and an error string, error fetching users. And in fact, we'll change the return type of this function from an array of users to be an array of users and a string. So if there are no errors, we want to return the array of users and an empty string. We'll head back to the index.go file where we'll create a variable users and error, which is equal to the result of calling the helper.get users and passing that db as an argument to it. We'll print at accounts retrieved successfully with the length of the users array. And if we run our app from the terminal, you can see we get the message account retrieved successfully. One, because we have only created one account. Next, we head back to the helper for slash main.go file 
they create another function get user by id which accepts a db argument which is of gom.db and an id argument which is a number they will create a user variable after which we are going to run a query db.where where the id property is equal to the id argument we are accepting in this function and then we are going to change a call to the dot first method they will check that user has a valid id if not we'll return an empty user object and an error string no user with that id otherwise we'll return the user object and an empty string we head back to the index.go file where we'll attempt to fetch the user with an id of 3 then we'll print out their name to the console we we'll head back to the terminal and test this out you can see that we call a name sometime if we try to fetch a user with the id of 4 you observe that we get an error because there's no user with that id so let's go ahead and see how we can update a record so for that we head back to the helper for slash main.go file where we'll add a new function update user which accepts a db argument an id argument which is an integer and a name argument which is a string the function will return a user object or a string and inside the function will create a variable user then we will use a query to update the first item whose id matches the id we pass into the function to update the user's name then we will return an empty user object and an error string if there are any errors encountered while trying to update their name else we are going to return the updated user so that's going to be it for this video guys i hope you find it useful and interesting absolutely smash the like button sure you can subscribe to the channel so you can get access to all of our videos in the future as they drop if you observe we didn't implement how to delete records i'm going to leave that to you to figure out okay and we are going to see in the next video